So I'm Peran and I'm with uh, APEN, the Asia Pacific Environmental Network. And I'm going to tell a story in a couple of parts of our partnership with the Center for Story-Based Strategy. Um, and the first is where we were about 20 years ago when we started uh, at the first People of Color uh, Environmental Summit, the first EJ Summit that happened and APEN was born then. Uh, two of where we are now and how we kind of got here with the, the, the support of CSS and then sort of the impact that their, their help uh, uh, has had on for APEN and I think broadly sort of the environmental justice movement. So 20 years ago, once upon a time, um, there was a summit of EJ leaders and APEN was sort of born of, of, of that time. Um, and at that, at that time, we were really focused for a very long time in Richmond and Oakland on local site fights related to the Chevron refinery and just some basic safety as well as uh, uh, environmental health related to um, Chinese immigrant workers in, in Chinatown. We're definitely at the sort of front line of that in terms of affordable housing and the refinery safety. Um, and we did a good job. I mean, we were fairly effective. Um, we won a federal case uh, for uh, environmental health uh, sort of protections for ATX, which is a computer manufacturer, um, in, in Richmond on behalf of Chinese immigrants. We got the first multilingual warning system put in place at the refinery in Richmond. So it doesn't just sort of blare out a horn, but it actually you know, makes a phone call in the language that the folks are speaking, um, as opposed to English, where my mom would have been like, what are you saying? Um, uh, shelter in place, what? Um, uh, we got a community benefits agreement. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, but community benefits agreement in, in San Francisco, or in uh, Oakland, around a very large uh, development, which uh, assures some affordable housing and sort of uh, local employment. Um, and then most recently, we stopped uh, Chevron refinery expansion. Um, that was effective, but it was super limited. Like we were in like one place, one thing, taking a lot of time. And in the 20 years since APEN was founded, the problems that we were working on have continued to grow, right? They've gotten bigger. So certainly the levels of inequality that exist in America are much worse than they were in 1990, let alone longer than that, right, in the arc of history. The climate crisis is significantly worse. We're really at a precipice. And so we were at a place where we were really trying to figure out how, how do we have impact that sort of ripples beyond just the places that we've had impact. We went through sort of a, um, next slide. We went through sort of a moment of inquiry. And what we realized is that together we, we are also bigger. We as the broader we and we're actually growing. And I've got sort of these three slides up, these three pictures up here, just to note that in terms of bigger, saying that the demographic in America is shifting, and that's everybody sort of heard that story, that demographic is also way more interested in paying for infrastructure. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a desire to build um, and support that, like a desire to pay taxes at a higher level if it brings community benefit. So the work that California Calls did, that we did with them, like that was that was that was that six percent, right? That was that tipping point. So in California, we are a majority, but we're more than that. We're more we're a tipping point. We are the ones that are overwhelmingly polling and saying, you know, at 70, 80 percent that we want we want to see solar and wind investment, that we want to rebuild California's infrastructure. Whereas other parts of the state, more sort of the, the older um, white demographic is pulling down at the 40s. We're somewhere in the 70s and 80s. So we, we saw that there, we're at this moment where we can actually start to, to move forward. And that Prop 30 piece was really huge in California in terms of paying taxes. If you don't know California, 13 is, Prop 13 is just this, it's, it's, a, it's the third rail. You don't touch that thing. You don't touch taxes. 
Um, and it was it was a really really big big win. Next, please. So we sat around and we inquired. We're like, what are we going to do? Um, <laughs> and what we needed, what we realized was that we needed sort of a, a grand unifying story, right? I, I'm kind of a geeky physicist, actually, on the side. And like, so there's this grand unifying theory of everything. So I thought I'd kind of put the story up. Um, so we needed this, like, this sort of through line to get us from site fights to have sort of a ripple effect, right? So we can do it in program areas as organizations. We can do it in how we organize and how we invest. Um, but there's got to be something that sort of ties all of that together, right? And with the help of the Center for Story-Based Strategy, we actually found that through line. We found that if we are able to strategically link our our communication and organizing and root it in values that we all share, that we can, we can build a common narrative that worked for our organization and that tends to work for the folks that we're trying to, to, to sort of move. So we really started with this idea of having some, some common values. So we're, we're an organizing organization. We do leadership development and we do base building. We had for 20 years, right, and we still do. When you start to do strategic communication, it really unearths a lot of uh, challenges, right? Because where's your line? Where's that line in the sand? What aren't you going to cross? Where are you going to say, no, we're not going to make that deal? Mm -hmm. You know, we're walking, right? So we, as we started working with CSS, started to realize we needed to sort of hone in and start with a place of what are our common values? So what are the common values that we share? We share a value of opportunity for everybody, because um, we work primarily with immigrant refugee communities. That's sort of this narrative of America as it's a place of opportunity, sort of. <coughs> um, <laughs> we, sh we, we, have this, we have this value of shared responsibility. We, we don't owe each other something. We, we collectively create something. So we, we, we all are part of a whole system. We're part of an interconnected system and we share responsibility for taking care of each other as well as the system. Whether that be the earth, whether that be you know, providing opportunity or access or jobs um, to somebody, giving somebody a second chance. Um, and we also believe in terms of our value, we, we believe in cooperation. That if we work together, we're stronger. Right? And I'll bring that forward in sort of the symphony metaphor that I use later on. And finally, we realized that we love, we love. And we love people and we love planet. And that's sort of this really basic core value that we share. And so the work that we started, you know, was somewhat transactional. And what it ended up becoming was quite transformative for our organization. And I really, like, I'm not just being, like, using hyperbole. It was truly, truly Patrick's work and CSS's work that helped us get there. So the process. Um, I'll just say I grew up in Northern California. I was born in India, but I grew up in Northern California. And you know, I can be hippy dippy and like hug a tree and stuff, right? <laughs> but I am not necessarily a process person. Um, there's a lot of process, right? <laughs> and so a year plus ago, when we started our, our relationship, um, you know, I learned all about meme storms and fairy tales word association and group drawing. We did this with staff. Like, it wasn't just me sitting in a room with Patrick. It was all of our staff <laughs> uh, sitting around doing this stuff. And <laughs> at first, I have to admit, I was like, what are we doing? Oh my god, we've gone down the wrong path. <laughs> um, but what it did, what it did was it opened all of our, it opened up all of our sort of creative places and our hearts. And it allowed us then to go to the next part, which is a little bit more intellectual, which is identifying cornerstones and then um, utilizing a drama triangle, which sort of, you know, you got a hero, you got a villain, you got a victim, sort of work that <coughs> out. And the cornerstones allowed us to identify that we have a base, we have a strong base, and we don't necessarily need help talking to them. We know that we're culturally competent, we are linguistically competent with the folks that we work with there's this other audience that we need to move in order to shift the power dynamic, right? In order to shift the policies for the long term. 
and hit and make the changes in those big in those uh, sort of bigger issues that we're dealing with. So and those were legislators. And we needed we needed some support and help to be able to to work with that, and develop a frame for for that sort of thing. So that's what I when I say like it was transformative. It moved our minds as well as our hearts. And that the process did that. So I'm a total believer um, <laughs> in 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 the way that we sort of get there and what CSS has done for us on that. So we pivoted. We moved from opposition to proposition. Um, we sort of came up with the, this message of energizing the future, which at its core is really about messaging from inevitability, right? So marriage equality message from in inevitability is like, you're on this train or you're not, right? And, and this, is, this is where we're going to go. And you can be left or you can, you can come forward with us. Obama did it with hope and change. It's like, it's going to happen, folks. So we wanted to start to sort of utilize that idea of moving from opposing things, which the EJ movement has really been told that, that, that we do, to proposing something, right? To sort of leading progress and change. And these were sort of the, the basic uh, aspects of the sort of frame that we use. We want to claim progress and innovation. We utilize sort of a journey metaphor, which works in English. Sort of you're always taking a path. We're breaking down barriers. We're moving towards something. Right, and uh, much of the messaging utilizes that. And we wanted to use this idea of energy is everywhere. Energy is everything. Energy is very, very good. Um, and we want to harness that. We want to harness that in people. And we want to harness that in the power of the sun, in the power of the wind, in, that, in, in, the, in those sources that are renewable. So we use that in our messaging. And then we want to foreshadow, right? This inevitability. We're going to foreshadow the future. Um, so that's what we did there. This is just a quick example of how we did it. Um, we use this idea of who benefits, sort of this idea of inquiry, to, uh, to, to note that. So here, you know, in the drama triangle, um, I totally use that, by the way, to do it. Um, you've got in the shadow, Chevron, sort of this sort of darker image of, of, of uh, who they are and suits. Um, and then, you know, what the future is, right? Sort of spanning forward, renewable energy, people, it's localized in home. It, you know, there's context in terms of the sign for the city. And we just, we ask. We don't tell somebody, you need to do this now, right? We just say, hey, so who benefits? Like, when we make investments in renewable energy, who benefits? When we make investments in fossil fuel and tar sands, who benefits? Like, is this really the America that we want, right? That has opportunity, that has access, and cooperation for folks? But we are but one cello player, and we're decent at it, and it's pretty to hear, right? But with CSS working with APEN and a few of our sort of allied organizations, we're a symphony. And I really do think of this as CSS's greatest strength, is that they're sort of this they're like sunlight, right? It's like sort of, if, if we allow them to be everywhere, if we allow this idea of the narrative to be everywhere, this story, this narrative that isn't just a story, but is strategically noted, right? Um, it, it, it really raises the, the sound. And, it, and while one person playing, one organization playing is fine, they've really been able to align a lot of our, a lot of our music. So through Seha, which is a California-based EJ group alliance, and sort of this national and global climate justice alignment um, or alliance, they, we've been able to sort of hone in and lock down our, our narrative and, and echo out more than just the 5,000 or 50,000 people that APEN touches or 5,000 or 50,000 people that Communities for a Better Environment touches or Movement, movement Generation or whomever um, touches. We're able to sort of amplify that. Um, so the sound of that one cello is actually a, a full symphony. And that's it. And of course, no slideshow would be uh, done without saying thank you to everybody and <laughs> noting my daughter, um, <laughs> who really is ready. She was totally into holding that sign up. Um, so thank you, folks.